hello folks this is John with Ozarks Backroads we're here in the shop today in the garage we got a little project going on thought a few people might be interested so I'm gonna make a video on this what we're looking at here is a uh, electronic cruise control system and uh, I thought the Versus the Versus 1000 needed a cruise control I uh, had it out west this summer and uh, put some miles on it out on the road and uh, uh, Kawasaki kind of forgot to put the cruise control on this system on this bike and uh, I think it's time to fix that so what we have here is the uh, the MC cruise electronic cruise control system and uh, you get a nice PDF with your system from MC cruise and really good uh, you get really good uh, looks like good instructions I've read through them and uh, they uh, they cover all the points so I think we should be able to get through this pretty well we'll kind of go through this step by step and see how this works as per the instructions we've removed the, the seat and uh, we've removed the uh, the negative uh, battery cable there off the battery if we can get this to focus the next thing we have to do is remove this lower uh, fairing panel right here uh, with the turn signal on it on the left side and uh, the way we do that there's two there's two screws in here it's really hard to see but that one and this one here on the fairing and then that'll pop out so we'll do that now i'm going to use an allen socket on those two uh, screw heads we were looking at and i've got a swivel on here just to make it simpler to work around this bar i've got on here but it'll uh, allow it to line up a little better Loose. So we've got to unplug the turn signal connector here. Okay, so right here is the uh, turn signal connector we're going to disconnect to remove this panel. Uh, it's got a little push tab right here on the. We just push that in and then pull the. Release the connector out of it there. All right, we've got our uh, wire unhooked. See if this panel will come out over these bars, and it does. Okay, for the uh, for the upper panel fairing panel here, it's pretty simple. You got the one screw, and then we got just push pins and grommets. We just pull it off. So this shouldn't be too bad at all. So with the screw out, we got a clip here, and then we got a grommet there, and I think there's a couple here, and maybe one right here. Pretty simple. They just plug into the. Okay, the next thing we've got to remove is this side panel, this lower side panel right here. And we've got two screw, we got two screws, uh, one right here and one back here. And then there's a there's a uh, push pin and another screw up here, and I'll get the camera on that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two off first. We've got the two screws out, and then there's a there's a bolt, a screw right up here. You can see in the front silver screw and then there's a push tab from below right here the push tab we can just push it up from the bottom there it goes and then it'll pop out and there it goes and that leaves the, the screw in there and I'm going to use my swivel again to get the angle on this put that in there and uh, I've already cracked it loose just back it out there it goes and it looks like we've got one it's, it's punched into a, gr a pin and a grommet right back here yep get that released what do we got here another pin and grommet right there and that releases our panel and it's out of there Okay, well the next thing we're going to do it says is to remove the uh, the throttle cable from the end of the throttle shaft down here the the one that pulls 
when we throttle up. So to do that, we've got to we've got to take all the slack out of the, or we got to loosen up the cables with this adjuster here. I'm going to screw that jam nut out, and then I'm going to turn this all the way down. It's going to give me the maximum amount of slop in my cables. Here we are down here on the throttle shaft. When I, when I throttle, you can see I'm twisting the grip. This cable right here, the lower one, is what's turning the butterflies here to open it. The upper one, when I release it, it will pull. When I'm closing it, it's the one that shuts it. This is the one that opens it. So they're saying we, we need to remove the one that opens it. So I'm just going to spin this all the way around. Line the cable up in the slot right here. And then this will pop out towards me. It'll come out of the barrel. There it goes. So we've got that off. We're going to leave this one on. And we're going to take this cable out of its holder. Like yay. Okay, the next thing they wanted us to do there in the instructions was to lubricate or is to lubricate our uh, both throttle cables. They want to make sure they're working smoothly. Two screws to take this throttle housing apart into two halves here. We'll remove these two screws. Okay, we've got the uh, throttle cable, the housing apart here. It came apart in two halves. You got the two cables here, and uh, we're going to pop them out of this spool. Okay, got to note which one's which. This is the pull cable here that, that opens the throttle. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lubricate these cables. Here's my little Motion Pro cable tool, cable lubrication tool. And uh, the way it works is we loosen the clamps up here on it. Take our cable and we run it through the slit right there so that the cable's totally inside. And then we run the cable in as far as it'll go, like that. And then we clamp it down. This will seal the rubber off around the, the cable and the, uh, or around the uh, cable end here. We'll tighten this down. Get her good and snug. And then we'll take our cable lube. The cable lube has a straw. What do we got here? PJ, PJ1 cable lube. I'm not sure where I got it, but I got it. But the straw goes in this hole right here. You can see it here. So we're going to put our straw in there. And uh, there it goes. So if we've got this sealed up good, when we hit the hit the nozzle here on this can, it'll force the fluid in the end of the cable and it'll come out down at the other end. All right, let's see what we got going on on the other end. I got oil coming out the other end of the cable, so that's as good as it gets right there. Oh yeah, feels so good. This one I've got to do from the other end. It's got this funky end on it here. So I'll have to force fluid up through from the other end on this one, but it's the same process. You can see the cable in there. I'll give this a squirt. And you can see the fluid's coming up the cable, bubbling out there. So we've got that one. We've got both cables well lubed. Looks like the next thing we need to do is install the... They've, they've, they've supplied us with a cable here. The one we removed that opens the throttle. We're going to put this new cable on. So it goes down. This is the end that goes on it. It goes in our holder here where we took the original cable out of. Uh, actually, it says to route it behind this connector right here, this ground connector. You can run it down behind it. Oh, 
I'll get in there. There it goes. And then come into it like this. So we'll run our cable back behind the slot there and put this right back in there like the, just like this one was in, except it's the new cable. It said just to run this out the top and leave it for now. So we got that in there. And then we need to go ahead and hook this up. We got all kinds of cable that's not hooked to anything. So we'll just stick it in the hole there. And there we go. That's our new cable, that our new throttle apply cable. And that's the return cable. It's not hooked up yet, so it's not going to do anything. All right, we got that routed behind there, like it said, and up. We got it in. Let's move on. Okay, the next thing we need to do here is to uh, raise the fuel tank, stand it up so we can get some access. I've got the panel off, the upper panel off here on this side. I need to go ahead and pull this, this upper panel off over here, just the one screw, and just like it was on this other, on the left side. And then we got two screws at the front of the tank down here. Um, or two bolts there. Take these two bolts here out and then uh, we'll stand the tank up. There is a fuel vent hose here on the side of the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, this little wire retainer pinch it together and pull it over the nipple down the hose a little bit and pull this hose off. I've got a little prop rod of board here I'm gonna to try to prop this up with. Okay, here we are under the back seat here, and this is our servo unit. It's got a cable on it that runs in, to the uh, up and runs the uh, the throttle there on the throttle shaft. I've drilled a hole down here and run a cable tie through it. I'm going to tie wrap this down like so, and then it's got Velcro on the bottom. Uh, this is the piece that's I'm fixing to stick down here. I'm going to go ahead and peel. I've cleaned that off. I'm going to go ahead and peel my tape off. Get that pointing straight down. Up against my bracket almost. Something like that looks about right. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie wrap this bad boy in place. Well, that kind of looks like the pictures they're showing. They sent us a bracket to mount this cable interface adapter to, or this cable interface unit. This is it right here. Right here, this metal bracket here. And basically you just take a a bolt out there and uh, they sent you a longer bolt and you put that bracket on. So this is what our, our unit's going to uh, mount to. Okay, we got our cables routed up here. This is the new cable we installed on the um, that pulls the throttle open down here. Okay, that's the new one we, we put in. It's routed up here where this unit goes. This is the original cable that we took loose that, from the throttle uh, handle up here, the throttle grip. That's the one we removed to put this other one in down here. And then we've got a third cable which is from the um, servo right here. It runs from the servo unit back here that we installed on the tail long cable. So that's the one the computer, the cruise control unit servo is going to pull this one to open the throttle and then uh, the throttle grip on the handlebar is this cable and then this cable actually runs to the unit to do the pulling and then we've got a unit over here that all these cables hook into and it's called a cable interface unit's what they call it and it's got a few parts there 
So we'll set up and hook our cables up and put these pieces in, hook the cables in, and you can kind of see how that, all that works. Here's our bracket we mounted right here. And then this is our uh, ICU housing, or C cable interface, CIU housing. Here's our cable from this, the servo, okay, that's going to the computer control servo. It says to uh, install the cable in the servo cable into the housing. And there's a retaining screw here. We run the cable in and then tighten the screw down. Our cable still works good. Okay. So our housing is going to mount right up in the end of this uh, bracket we put on, just like this. Okay. And then we've got a spool that goes on. This cable goes in. And this is it here. You can see the little hole where the ball on the end of the cable goes. So we'll run it and stick it in there. And then down the slot, down the center track. And kind of work that in there and get that cable in the groove and like that. And now we're going to take the cable that goes to the throttle body, the, the little short cable that we put in. This one here, the new one. And it goes, goes in the top hole back here. It's a threaded hole, like that. And then this housing will spin. We're supposed to screw that all the way in. We've got another spool here, and it's got a hole, uh, hole marked with the pit. That's where this, this goes, okay? And then we line this and this up and install it with this little sleeve. And there's a pin on the back that goes in this slot in the back of this so it can spin in the slot. So let's see if we can get all this rigging together. And it goes over the top. There it goes. Now stay tuned, we've still got one more cable to go here. This cable here, this is the original cable from the throttle grip. It goes through this slotted hole. The slot lets the cable slide in. And then the cable goes in this hole. Like that. There it goes. All right. I see. It goes way down in there. That's why it wouldn't go. All right. So now we can look at that. We've got the, the from the twist grip hooked into the outer groove on this spool. And then the one that goes to the throttle cam down here is the back one. And then the big spool is from the servo in the back, the first cable we put on. So we've got all four cables, or all three cables. Now we can mount this up right here and put a bolt to it. We've got a cover for this unit here and uh, it just snaps it in place or goes in place here get around here and then we run a bolt big old long bolt with the washer through the through the hole in the bracket through the sleeve and all the riggings inside and then we've got a washer and a locking nut there. That's probably tight enough. All right. So I guess that's where that little unit lives right there. It's kind of up underneath the little pocket here under the dash. We got the throttle uh, 
cable interface unit mounted up there and the book had me or the instructions had, ran me through a kind of a rough uh, adjustment on these cable ends I adjusted this one according to what they said and then our servo uh, our servo cable over here they had me run it out about 10 threads there and uh, just leave it for now. I guess we're going to do a final adjustment on it. We put the uh, throttle housing back together and it had me do an adjustment on the, uh, the throttle cable here, the one we loosened up, loosened up all the way. Um, so I got the free play that they, they wanted there in the throttle cable or in the grip. Okay, for our wheel sensor, we got some magnets that go in the bolts here on this speed sensor ring, this relic, this ring here. So we got one, two, we got four bolts here. They sent us six magnets. They said that it doesn't matter which way they go in, the polarity wise of the magnet, as long as they're all the same. So we're supposed to just leave them in a row like this. They're strong little buggers. Put one in, slide the row off. Oh. Put the next one in, slide it off. That way the polarity stays the same. All norths will be pointing out or all souths will be pointing out. They won't be mixed up. All right, so we got those on. And now we've got to mount up our speed sensor. It goes under the bolt here with the uh, wheel sensor the factory wheel sensor right here. Then it's another sensor, a little bracket. It's ours mounts right on top of it, just like this. They sent us a new bolt. And a washer. We'll run this in. And then we're supposed to check and it should run under the center. I'm looking in behind the sensor. My magnet is running in uh, under the center of it. It said I needed an eighth of an inch and I've got over that. Uh, I've got probably three sixteenths at least. It said I can bend the bracket if I need to. That's about an eighth of an inch there. We've got a uh, switch that goes in here. It uh, goes on here for our, uh, on our power and our uh, Excel and D-cell set and resume. It's a pretty nice little unit. That they feel good. Uh, I'm not all that crazy about the design, but you gotta have something, right? But anyhow, it mounts underneath the mirror right here. So we'll take this off, this goes under it. And then that'll be our control switch for the cruise. And there it goes. Now we'll have to route the wires down, down and along and back to where the uh, computer's going to sit under the seat here. All right, we got our wire ran back here to the from the control switch. Runs just follows the harness down here, down the bar, through the harness hoops on the left side of the. Uh, steering head and then right back over the top of the motor and up here and uh, there you go. Here we are under the seat here. This is our uh, servo we mounted earlier. This is our, con our uh, little computer that our wiring harness for all the control all this stuff hooks into here. We're gonna, I got Velcro stuck to it. We're going to Velcro it down right about here give enough room for our harness between this connector and the and the uh, maybe back over here a little bit something like that so I'm just gonna peel the uh, 
Velcro off here and stick this bad boy down. We'll try it right about there. We've taken our wiring harness they've sent us and we've plugged it into our controller here that we mounted and it had us to plug up our servo that we mounted earlier. Our big servo motor goes right in there and it's got some nice looking the connectors on this thing are OEM style. They're all sealed with with the uh, O-rings and they look like pretty good uh, they're not they don't look cheap they look good all right we plugged up our servo it had us to separate out our wire here that goes to the speed sensor down here the blue and black so we throw that over there for now here is our wire our, our wire we fished back from the uh, control switch there's a plug for it and uh, we'll go ahead and plug that up and then we've got a ground wire right here that goes to our battery right here so I'm just going to run it over here with our other ground wires I've ran under the strap here to hold them and then the rest of these are supposed to go underneath the uh, tank mount here and forward along the left side well we've routed our uh, wire here for our speed sensor out of our harness here underneath the bracket down the outside of the frame and then out and followed and we've chased it along here on the uh, the brake hose and the sensor wire that runs back to the caliper back here followed it back here on the on the sensor wire and the brake hose ran it back and then plugged it into my sensor that we installed earlier so I've got my sensor wire installed and ran lasted in place our next move here is we've routed our three remaining wires two of which go to the handlebars and one that goes to the ignition and now we're going to make a connection and get our uh, ignition connection made so we can get uh, the tack wire here so we can uh, monitor the RPM of the engine. And this is a little bit involved. It's not bad, but don't let it scare you off. It's The instructions are really good. So uh, we'll get the camera set up here and I'll show you how we do this. Uh, this is the top of the cylinder head here on the left side. And what you can see right here is a yellow, the, the yellow is a connector off of the number one spark plug. I've unplugged it. The spark plug is right here. And I just push the little tab down and back the connector out. So there's my connector off of the number one spark plug. And that yellow is the retainer for the pins. It's part of the retainer for the pins. There's two wires in the back of this, a black and a, and a red. So I'm going to remove this yellow I'm just gently pry this yellow retainer out with a small screwdriver Oop, that was real gentle the, the black wire we're going to back out and that's this one over here I'm looking at the back of it and there's a little plastic tab right here above the connector and all I'm going to do is take my little flat screwdriver and slide it in between the connector and that little black tab right there and it'll raise that tab up and when that tab raises up that wire I can back it out of the back it'll, it'll come out of the back and there it went okay so there's my wire my connector with the black wire on it so now I'm going to go over here to my wire for my ignition off the harness here that we've ran up and then the other wire right here we got two this is going to go back in the connector that we just backed the wire out of so we're just interrupting the circuit there we're running the circuit through our controller so it can monitor the uh, the ignition pulses i think what i'm going to do is go ahead and run this one in the back of the connector first and that goes up just like that there it goes and then i'm going to push it forward until you feel it snap and then it won't back out anymore 
and there it is. It's in place. You can see it there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that little holder unit that I popped out. I'm going to put it back in and it fits above the connector and it holds those tabs down so they can't come up. So it locks those tabs down and keeps the pins from backing out. Down, I'm just going to push it back into place. And uh, that keeps the pins from, locks the pins in. They can't come out now. It stayed. All right. Okay. We've backed out the black wire. Here it is here. And we plugged in the yellow wire where it was in the plug. The black wire, they sent us another barrel that ma matches up with this one. And we need to slide the, the, wire, the black wire that we backed out, we need to slide in here and make sure it clip, clips into place. It'll only slide in there one way. Okay, well, I got it snapped in. You can see the end of the connector there and it snapped. Okay, so now all I need to do is plug the yellow wire, the other yellow wire here that has the barrel on it from our harness. I just need to plug it in. And there she goes. Now all that's left to do is to plug the, the cap back onto the spark plug. The coil on the top of the spark plug here. The way this went on was the little push tab to release it was straight on top. So I'll turn that back on top, slide it into place, and snap it in. And then it was slid around kind of like that, so I'm going to turn it back. We've made our connection there. We will have to route this up when we get done and, and uh, do some tie wrapping with these cables and whatnot and make sure they don't interfere with our, our mechanisms here on our throttle body. Okay, the two remaining wires we had pulled out down here. I've routed up along the uh, wire that uh, we ran with for the control switch here when we ran that wire down. I routed them back up and there's two there was two cables left. One of them is the two connectors here that go to the uh, clutch switch right here. So it ran, it, I ran it over on this side. The other one goes over to the other side for the brake switch. And that's it here. I just ran it around the front of the steering head and, and up along with the rest of the wires there that come up on that side. Okay, so here we are at the clutch uh, switch. And if you look right here, you can see where the plug plugs into the clutch switch and I've unplugged it. And there, there it is, it just popped out. Okay. So that's it there. So on our cable we ran up here for this side, we've got the connector here and the uh, female that we're gonna plug this plug that we pulled out of the switch goes into this female here and this goes in where this was at. We've tapped into the clutch switch by doing this so the computer for the cruise control knows when you uh, engage the clutch and it'll it'll drop the cruise. Okay, over here on the brake side we got a, we've got to hook up our uh, our uh, harness wires for the brake switch. It's located this is the uh, it's located right underneath the master cylinder. You can see where the wires are plugged on right here. And, uh, and there they are. I pulled them both off the switch. You can see the terminals there on the switch. So on the other, on the end of our cable here, we've got two spades, two males, and two females. Two wires we unplugged are females here, so we'll put the spades into those. Into these two that came off the switch. And the other two females will plug onto the switch. And that'll complete our connection. Alright, well we've, uh, Got our uh, brake switch hooked up over here and kind of taped and did some cable tie work on all the cables. Um, we've got our main cable cluster here. We've tied all that up and, and then it runs up here and we've made sure it doesn't get pinched under the gas tank. These cables here, kind of get them down where the tank doesn't get on them. And, uh, 
Just kind of neatened everything up and tied it all up. We've hooked up our ground wire here uh, on the battery. And then it had it, it had us to run us run through a uh, diagnostics uh, test where we basically set the, the the lash in this servo cable right here. You run the um, you run the uh, the throttle up with the uh, in test mode with the uh, accelerate button, and you run it back, and then you make adjustments to where you three clicks will bring the throttle up off idle, and three will bring it back down to idle. And then also there's a light that verifies when your brakes brake light switch is engaged. When you engage the brake, you can verify that works. And then we ran some diagnostics on it where you set it up and it verifies the speed sensor. It's getting a reading and everything's working properly. It's pretty simple. The instructions are really good. It takes about five minutes, eh, maybe ten minutes, reading the instructions and doing it. And the good news is I test fitted the seat and everything fits under the seat real well. No problems there. I was kind of worried about that with that Corbin seat. So, we're going to put the panels back on it. Uh, the side panels and the side fairings there. And then we're going to take it for a cruise and see how it goes over a big hill. See how it operates. Alright people, we have chased wires and tapped into switches and run cables and tie wrapped everything to everything. We've done diagnostics. It's time to see if this cruise system actually works. That's really all I care about. Does it work? So we're going to go find out. Time for the test ride. We'll turn the cruise on. Let's see. Run her up here to 65 and just do set. Well, so far so good. It's kind of hot, kind of throttled back there coming down the hill to hold it at 65. Flying power. Get me over the hill. I believe it's working. Works kind of like a car throttle back a little bit coming back down the hill got cruise on the uh, versus now that's pretty cool we'll, we'll give this front brake a tap here boom yep it released cool so far so good on the cruise control go get some fuel before I end up pushing this thing. What did it hold? 4.4. It's probably as low as I've ever ran it. 4.4. I don't know what the tank holds. Five and a half. Probably had a gallon left. I'd say it had one bar showing. So pretty much it works just like a car. You got your on off, which is your on off. You turn it on, you get a red light. Then you got set and uh, set and excel and uh, reset and decrease or decel. So I'm just gonna hit, uh, I'm going too fast. Set her on 67 and hit set. And then my light goes amber, yellow there when it's set goes from red to yellow right here lets me know I'm my cruise is engaged and see how we get over this hill here doing all right dropped one mile an hour pulling the hill out there it's back to 67 it didn't pick up I thought it might jump to 68 coming down but it didn't yeah you can feel it applying power when you start back up the hill pretty smooth really can't tell a whole lot of what it's doing but the speedometer staying 66 67 well that pretty much wraps up the inst installation of the MC uh, cruise electronic cruise system on the 
2016 uh, Kawasaki versus 1000. It works pretty slick. I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, if you want to check them out, they're at mccruise.com. And it's a company out of Australia. They've been in business, uh, I don't know, quite a while, 20 years or more. But uh, I ordered it, let's see, it took about four days to get here from Australia. Come check it out, see if they got it for your bike. They had quite a few bikes there. Uh, a lot of adventure bikes and stuff. And other bikes too, but. And let's see, there was a split in, in their system, split at 2015. So this is a 2015 and newer. That's the system I got. They have a, a 2014 and earlier system. I think the servo was different or something, but anyhow, it works really good. Works just like it does in your car. Works like it does on the FJR. I can't tell much difference. So, I appreciate you hanging out for a exciting uh, <laughs> installation of a cruise system on a motorcycle, but you know, if it's something you're interested in, uh, I don't intend for the uh, the video to be an installation video. You'll need to follow your instructions if you decide to do this. I'm sure I glossed over some stuff or maybe even missed a step here or there, something that I thought was insignificant I might not have pointed out, but follow the instructions. They're excellent. The PDF's great. Uh, you know, it covers every detail, every nut, screw, everything. So, appreciate you hanging around. We'll catch you next time. Take care of yourselves.